that's mm. what ultimately you know uh, got you know those two 5k deals in the in the space of 24 hours we've got thomas thomas gale um who's been obviously through through the mentorship uh he started his eco agency uh probably how long ago about just over a year ago now okay so it's been a it's been not not a very long journey um i think you started with me i mean when you first reached out and we had a, that first initial call uh you were making like 2k a month or yeah it was yeah 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 2k a month yeah okay and and right now if you don't mind sharing for the viewers yeah. so right now with like counting performance fees uh which you know uh, we're pretty big on uh, on my agency well especially in the e-com space it's around like seven, eight K a month, but, um, yeah, clearly nowhere near to where I wanted to be on the long term though. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, a, a few days ago you, you shared in the community, um, like a big boom post, right. Which is what we call them. Uh, you closing like two deals for 5k, uh, in like less than 24 hours, uh, yeah. which is pretty sweet. Um, I mean, our curiosity, like, you know, tell us a little bit about those, those deals and how they, they come about for, for your agency, man. I mean, honestly, like a lot of it is simply about consistency. So I remember, I mean, I think it was like uh, middle, like of last year, uh, you know, I kind of went through a little phase of like complacency, if you will, came back from, I remember I came back from Bali, uh, you know, things mm -hmm. were actually going like pretty well, like in the agency and stuff. And yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people can relate, like, you know, you're in this space, like sometimes you, you go through those little slumps, like there's ups and downs and stuff. And then like, I think it was from literally October, uh, or maybe even, even September up until uh, February, basically, well, pretty much like up, up until now, just went super, super hard, like the hardest I've ever been going basically on, you know, on the agency. And, and that was like really going hard in terms of the outreach and stuff. And that's what ultimately, you know, uh, got, you know, those two 5k deals in the, in the space of 24 hours. Obviously, there, there is a bit of like timing luck there, you know, to, yeah. uh, to, to have it, you know, um, you know, on the, on the same day. but um, you know yeah it, it, that's that's basically the, the the key really like consistency and then you know you need a bit of, of you know timing uh look. for sure i, th I think uh you know in, in the short run i think there's an element you know there's an element of, of timing right to those big results obviously in the long run there's no time it's just like are you doing things well yeah yes or no right and and that's what determines your success what what, are, Thomas, what what are some of the biggest breakthroughs you've had when it comes to your outreach uh because it's you know for most people watching that's like if they've started the agency, they've realized that it's probably one of their biggest bottlenecks. Uh, they just cannot, you know, lock in enough meetings. They cannot sign enough clients. Um, what are some tips and, and some of the things that you've seen really work for you that once you implemented these these sort of strategies, it really took things uh, up a level? Leading with the giving hand, man. Like, honestly, providing value uh, first. Uh, and, and this is something that, um, you know, when I wasn't booking as many meetings as, as, as now, I, I was, you know, only asking for the call or like, you know, dropping a, um, a Canly link, right. And, you know, in the, in the email and, and that was like the call to action. But now obviously we've also going through your, your mentorship and, and, and the, um, the outreach systems and stuff, and, and also adding on the, uh, social media side of things like the, you know, uh, organic client attraction, yeah. like that's helped a lot. So like LinkedIn and email are pretty much, um, the main areas that we get our meetings and clients, uh, right now, you know, for the agency. And, and uh, yeah, like a lot of it comes down to actually like setting those meetings through those, those, those mediums. It comes down to providing value. So some type of, yeah, value that, that they actually need, like that specific brand. And we're currently specialized in the beauty space. So that also helps a lot, like within actually, you know, uh, uh, you know, resonating with, you know, you know, with the, the, the prospect and it positions us as like more of an expert in their eyes, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, Cause it's more specific to them, like the value that we provide. Oh, okay. Um and, and yeah, that helps a lot, basically, uh, yeah. obviously booking those meetings. Yeah, there is, it's something that I, I talk a lot about, right? Which is when it comes to a sales funnel, there, there should always be a step where that, that is value driven, right? Whether it's a demo call, a video audit, a request or something like that, right? Before a strategy session. And I feel like a lot of people just, you know, hey, are you free? You know, here's what we do. Are you free for a call? Like you're only going to attract a very, very uh, slim number of people. And not only that, but you're playing, if you're going for that approach, you're essentially playing the numbers game and no one wants to play the numbers game because the numbers game essentially means like you banging out hundreds of cold emails for six to eight hours a day until you eventually land a meeting, right? It's not about, you know, how many meetings you land. It's about what input you put to create the output, 
right? It's about looking for those asymmetric return uh, activities. Um, I really like one of the things that you said, right? Which is like, it really helps that you're in the beauty space, which is something that I preach a lot about, right? Uh, which is find your sub niche, right? And go hard uh, on that sub niche because essentially you can build your authority and you become the go-to person in that space, right? Um, I think the previous like student interview, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if you've ever spoken to him, but uh, it was Patrick, right? And he's become like the go-to, you know, one of the go-to people in, in the fitness space. Uh, what are some of the advantages that you've seen narrowing down into a specific sub niche into the beauty space, uh, like you, sp you mentioned? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I think, directly like one of the biggest ones is you you're just instantly viewed as more of a, like an expert you know for, you know for, you know in the prospect's eyes at least and also obviously helps a lot like on the actual meetings you know um you know sales calls or whatever uh, you know it, it's like a an instant value add you know because one of the biggest things in you know generating results in the e-commerce space as well is is obviously knowing the customer avatar like really well and like knowing who we're talking to through ads or, you know, or whatever service, you know, email, or, um, you know, whatever service you're providing. And, and so that's a big like uh, value add for clients when we tell them, look, I mean, you know, we've been uh, specialized in the beauty space or whatever, uh, cat, you know, subcategory of, of, of e-commerce for X amount of time. And by now, you know, we basically know, you know, the customer avatar of, let's say, you know, the, you know, your specific skincare brand, like a lot better than, a massive general, uh, you know, ge you know, gen generalist agency, and which are obviously usually the bigger ones. But uh, you know, at this time, like we're trying to just scale, and and then obviously once we, you know, get to a certain amount, uh, like of of you know revenue and clients, like that's when we'll, uh, as mentioned in your mentorship, like become more of a broad agency. Yeah. Uh, for now, this is like yeah, it's it's like the best way. You know, when you're looking to scale to that six figure plus mark, multi six figures mark, it, it's. The best way I found, like to to scale to yeah. to, to to that mark. Yeah, and, and I'm I'm not sure if this happened if if you do this, but like you can also name drop, right? You can say like, oh, you know, brand like I don't know Kylie Cosmetics or some, you know, they're doing this funnel and they're doing this sort of like, you know, they're doing this sort of approach, right? And you know, hearing these names, right, and and listening to the fact that like you know about their space, like you know your shit when it comes to what they do on a daily basis. They care, have you seen that they care way more about that than what you may know about like the technicalities of media buying and Facebook ads? Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Like uh, the, yeah, the other perk is, yeah, you know the, you, you get to know the industry as well as anyone else really in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, all the brands, like the, the, you know, the top competitors of these prospects that you're reaching out to and helps a lot, obviously, also when maybe you're recording like a, um, uh, an ad audit, right? You're comparing them to like mm -hmm. a top competitor, like like an actual top competitor, not not a, you know, not you know, just a general, you know, one. Like because you get that extra layer of knowledge, you know, of the industry, which which helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, a lot of the money that you make is through the performance incentives, right? The percentages. Um, Walk us a little bit about, like, uh, you know, for, for people that are not aware of how we structure thing with ad profit deals and stuff like that. Um, what have you seen, you know, wh why have you seen like they're super valuable and, and, you know, like, are you a big fan of them, big proponent of it? Like, what, why, why do you think those are, are quite key and why do you implement them so much in, in your pricing? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I think it's key, like, like simply due to the, um, like having skin in the game factor uh, as well, like clients love that. Uh, and how we like to operate is having a flat fee and then the performance fee. So we're typically not always like, like just, well, we're not just performance fee clients. Yeah, it depends like, um, you know, when they get to a certain stage though, like, and they're a lot bigger, we may just do performance, but um, yeah. Uh, so as I say, like helps a lot for the, you know, the skin in the game factor, like having more incentive to actually, you know, grow with the brand and, you know, grow as an agency, but, you know, you know, grow like as our clients are growing. Uh, and that helps a lot in the close, like, you know, them actually, you know, uh, moving forward with us, uh, less risk for them as well. Like, cause typically the flat fee isn't massive. Like it's, it's it, you know, it's, it's a good balance between the two and, and yeah, it's also a good incentive for uh, my team members, like adding a little uh, performance, right. For like the results that, for example, my media buyer would, you know, achieve, uh, you know, or, or, you know, yeah, you know, achieve for like a certain brand and, and that helps a lot, like just for the, the whole growth of the agency. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Let, let me ask you this, man, uh, more on a, well, well, we'll talk about personal life and, and all that stuff, right? 
Um, but I, I can, you know, from the time that obviously I've met you and, and throughout the mentorship and, and my time with you, I've seen a big shift in the way you carry yourself, your tonality, body language, um, the way you present yourself, obviously to 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 the much better, right? Um, and I, I think, I think you, you know, that's like, even just, you know, talking to you right now, I think that's like a major uh, difference that I see from the version of Thomas that I met, you know, on that initial call to now. Uh, I'm curious, man, is, is that, because I'm, I'm a big proponent of that, right? Um, the fact that tonality, body language, and, and essentially what, you know, it's not so much what you say, although that's important, right? But how you make someone feel, right? Do you make them feel confident in, in you because you're portraying that confidence, you're conveying that confidence? Um, have you worked on that? And if if not, uh, you know, what, what, what are some of the things that you think have helped you get to a point where your tonality, your body language, your expression on calls um, and your delivery is just that much better? Yeah, I mean, I think you naturally improve at that like as you obviously you know work on whatever it is you're working on does not just have to be an agency just a business or just your career you know as a whole mm-hmm. but uh, i think yeah i have like also i i guess worked on it in the sense that you know i have mentors you know and, and you know like a, a mentor like you also knowing you know kind of seeing you in the trenches and stuff helps a lot and also i guess experience uh, breeds confidence you know like uh the more the more I do, uh, you know, meeting like like you know sales calls or whatever. Like the, the obviously the better I become at them, and and that obviously helps a lot in, in you know gaining the trust of the the prospect or the client or whatever, and and ultimately growing the agency. And and the same goes with the team members as well. Like you know, uh, you know, truly having them um, like enrolled in the vision and stuff. Like that comes down to having the confidence, the conviction, like in. Mm-hmm you know what like the agency and then what you you offer if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah i think what you said there like um experience breeds you know experience and, and, and those little wins breed the confidence right i feel like a lot of people look at the people that are you know crushing it in the space look at the, the people that are at the top and they're like oh how the you know how, how the fuck are they so confident right and they don't understand that like if we all started in you know in a very similar spot where like we weren't very confident we you know we, essentially like you, you question yourself a lot right when you start out um but it's it's about getting those initial wins under your belt and eventually you you start gaining confidence to a point where now you have a lot of conviction in what you do right because you've seen it work time and time again for different clients you've signed a bunch of clients under your belt now you're making money you've got a thriving team and all this stuff adds to your character right um there's i'm curious to to the people that are at that initial stage right that don't have much confidence they don't you know they're kind of scared of, of jumping on a, on a sales call You've obviously been there not so long ago. What what are some of the 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 you know thinking modes? What are some of the mindsets that helped you overcome some of those initial fears? Yeah, I think just understanding that it's normal that you're gonna be shit on the on the thirty calls. Don't know if I can swear or not, but mm. um, basically, um, yeah, like just understanding that that's totally normal. I remember the first probably you know. 10 20 sales calls of my life like i was nervous as hell you know like obviously so nervous uh nowhere near as as good as i am uh you know now and and I'm, i've still got such a long way to go but the the key is um yeah like you're only going to improve by doing you know uh, sales is like you know it, it's you can't um just learn about it you have to do it you have to get in the trenches and uh and you know not obviously just sales but pretty much like you know everything you, you really do like like in your business you have to you know do to, to improve and and yeah uh, I, I you know like the key is really just pushing through and and um you know when when you get nerve like you know before sales call when you're when you're getting nervous or whatever you just have to remember that you know ultimately all you're talking to is is another person um you know and you know it, this this person isn't <laughs> you know mean or anything you know they, they in most cases they want you to you know, like, like they, they want to, I don't know, just, just have a good conversation. And, and, and they're nice in 99% of the cases, they're just very nice people, especially like, you know, like business owners or obviously, so some of them can be like pretty, um, I guess, uh, you know, like, like, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty time sensitive and stuff. So they, they, you know, sometimes they just want to get right to the, the, the chase, but yeah, ultimately, you know, you're, you're just going to be talking to another person and, and it's, it's just a good opportunity to, to make a, you know, a, a, a new connection have a and have an interesting conversation as well uh which is a, a mindset shift that, that i've made in the recent months yeah i act human right like obviously 
there's power to to having a script but as long as you have a genuine conversation with the person and, and as long as you connect you're gonna build rapport right um and connection is not you know building rapport is not about like oh i live in the same street or like oh i follow the same football team like it's, it's just generally showing interest in what they're saying right people love talking about shit that they care about right so if you play to that and you listen and then obviously you build your authority and social proof then you're you're um you're gonna overcome that um one of the things that that you know you said that i resonate with um and that i talk about a lot as well is the fact that like you have to get those initial calls out of the way you have to get those first few videos on social media out of the way or or the first few posts because they're probably gonna suck right and and assuming that i mean look they may not um they may not be terrible right but compared to the version of you in a year they're gonna be terrible right and so it's just getting getting those out of the way um i see that now you're going you know pretty hard obviously on the content side of things um and the, the organic profile funnel creating videos creating um you know posts and stuff like that what are some of the the the, the highest leverage activities that you've seen on for example a platform like linkedin uh that you've you've gone ahead and, and like done implemented and you've seen a drastic change and difference in in the success of your agency yeah i think linkedin is definitely in terms of social media is like the best platform that i've seen work you know for 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 my agency anyway and and um the key well something that i've been doing just over the past few months is is literally posting valuable posts like you know posts that that give the um beauty uh, e-com you know brand owner like good value so specific you know to to, to my um, subcategory right now or like you know a, a niche within e-commerce and uh and yeah you know i think a lot of people who also do linkedin you know uh you know also like in our kind of community they'll they'll say the same thing it, it's it's a very good way of yeah uh getting those inbound leads by obviously providing value to your audience connecting on a daily basis as well with those mm. ideal customers um um, and, and yeah, you know, ultimately like, like building that audience of, you know, ideal, uh, ideal customers or potential customers. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's getting those inbound leads and, and also the people that you do message, they're going to tend to respond way more because they see that, you know, you, they, they start seeing your posts on, on, on their feed. They start seeing the social proof that you've got the, the authority and, and, and all that good stuff. Let me, let me ask you this. Uh, you mentioned that, um, you know, one of the things, one of the benefits that you've seen with, um, improving yourself and having more conviction in your vision, all that stuff is obviously getting team members uh, enrolled in the vision and getting them motivated. Um, what are some of the, the traits that you've seen make the best team members? I'm not sure if you've gone through a bunch of media buyers at this point, or maybe you've stuck with, um, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what are some of the traits um, for people watching? What are some of the traits that you've seen from the top media buyers, maybe from, from the person that you, you have now compared to the past people? Yeah, so um, top trades, I'd say, I mean, you know, to give like, I'd say free is um, not having, you know, like a massive entrepreneurial, you know, spirit, like, like in the sense that you obviously you want them to work with you on the long term. And, you know, like, it's good to have some entrepreneurial spirit, because like, I think you need that, especially if they are going to potentially progress as like a CMO, um, or whatever in the future. But at the end of the day like you want to work with them on the long term and and you know i'm uh you know not against them creating like their own business or whatever but you know it, 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 if you want to work with them on the long term they, they like they need to be wanting to be part of like an agency and not have their own thing if that makes sense like as their long-term personal vision um and then uh yeah uh, you know just actually being likable uh is really actually the main one um you know like not being you know, knowing how to, to obviously deal like with clients or like, like, you know, just, just being a likable person in the sense that, you, you know, it won't, um, f you know, frustrate like clients or whatever, like on calls or, you know, through communication. Cause, um, uh, you know, as taught in your mentorship as well, like, like the, the, my media buyer anyway, like handles a lot of the communication on a day-to-day -day basis and also like, you know, is on client calls and stuff. So it's important to, 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 to have that, you know, uh, ingrained in their character and, and that's something again that that they either have it or, or they don't if that makes sense like it's hard to obviously teach them um to be like you know like like to know you know it's hard you know it's hard them to you know it's hard to teach them like a different character or whatever yeah. and 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 um and then yeah like the other one is obviously being very good at their craft and, and being having the the sheer hunger to improve on a day-to-day -day basis and actually prove that by 
uh, like showing that they're, I don't know, um, you know, following, you know, this influencer who, who, who's really good in this, in Facebook ads or whatever, or like, um, you know, you know, just, just, you know, reading books or something like, like you know, copywriting, but like actually proving that they're, you know, doing it and, 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 and on a consistent basis, like that's huge because at, at the end of the day, like your team members in whatever service you pick, they're your product, you know, like they, they, they ultimately are like, of course, I also work on the ads and stuff. We kind of brainstorm together, but ultimately your team members are your product. So you want to make sure that you also invest in their growth and make sure that they're fully growth minded so that your agency can grow and, and obviously your, your, your clients get good results. Yeah. Great stuff. We delegate a lot, right? So we delegate communication. We have uh, really cool communication protocols, uh, reporting dashboards, um, part of the service delivery. What do you mainly invest your time into? What, what, is, what, what are your days? I mean, what do you spend most of your time doing when it comes to work? We'll talk about the personal stuff, but uh, when it comes to like your agency, what, what are some of those highest leverage and, and high revenue generating activities? Yeah, so main things are... Uh, literally uh i mean sales calls like, like pretty much that the outreach that the outreach is is pretty much automated um but i'd say like just making sure that um you know i'm getting consistent amount of like sales calls and, and hopping on those sales calls closing clients and then also making sure that the the uh, like my media buyer for example um is you know like like for fully clear on what he has to do as well like because sometimes obviously they need extra guidance whatever and 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 then also just the high level like um you know like project management stuff and, and this is something that i'm obviously still doing myself i don't yet have like a a um a you know general like manager or whatever but but you know that that stuff that you know i i do on a day-to-day -day basis like kind of setting out the uh you know, the goals for, like for the week, the tasks, you know, uh, for the, um, for the day or like, you know, uh, the goals for the month, whatever, like, you know, those higher level, like stuff. And then, and then obviously the, you know, the media buyer, like, you know, my media buyer, like does the nitty gritty, like, you know, ad account optimizations and stuff. Mm -hmm. awesome. When it comes to your personal uh, life, right. Uh, <laughs> going to put you on the spot a little bit, but uh, when I first met you, right, you were in Bali, like living in Bali uh, living the, the nomad lifestyle. Um, you know, it, it wasn't like, I mean, you weren't like a six figure, seven figure entrepreneur, which, which surprised me, right? Cause you were like living in, in Bali, um, which is like the typical, you know, nomad lifestyle kind of place. What, what was behind Cause it, it was interesting for me, right? When I, when, when you told me about it, but what was, um, the thinking behind that decision and how did it impact you? If, if at all? Yeah. So, um, the thing in behind going to Bali, simply put, it was actually like uh, a goal I set with one of my, uh, you know, good, really good friends, like a, a year prior to that. Yeah, pretty much exactly a year prior to that, like uh, at the start of the pandemic. And um, I don't know, it was just uh, like kind of the um, the goal to achieve or like the country to yeah. like the next country to go to as soon as like, you know, we were gaining like traction, like, you know, about businesses and stuff. And, and yeah, uh, so went there and, and 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 i was also actually uh dabbling in crypto at that point and you know doing actually you know you know gaining some good uh so you know some good money through that but like you know it's not a long-term thing to be honest like you have to you know master a, a, a business i'd say first like an agency yeah. uh, and then you know you can obviously look you know look into that but um anyway so so i went there and, and then how it impacted like me well it was good in the sense that like i i i um you know it's good it's just great to actually like live on your own in like a, a, a like on the other like end of the world yeah. and um yeah i signed a few clients over there but it wasn't to be honest as much growth as i would have liked to see um maybe because bali is pretty much like you know it's very much holiday vibes and stuff mm. and I, I don't know like if i learned something is, is that i personally pr prefer being in like um more of like an active place like a city i'd say okay. um to you know grind and and, and and build and maybe bali's more of a maintenance place but yeah it was, it was still great regardless like yeah. one of my best experiences yeah i mean i'll tell you why i found it interesting and i i, th I think it was like a, a really good move uh, on your end you know maybe not the most financially like fucking like i don't know financially you know if you're frugal like why would you know but i think i think like fuck that 
you know, like fast frugality, like putting that aside, right? I think uh, it's it's it was a good decision because it, it kind of maybe from my eyes, right? It, it it was a proof of concept. Like, oh shit, if I put in the work, I can actually achieve things that seem for for most average, like for most people that are living an average life, right? That seem like out of this world, like living in Bali, you know, living the nomad lifestyle, like realizing that these things are way more attainable than people think, you know, like you putting in a, you know, a few months of work during quarantine already allowed you to grasp that, that lifestyle. Right. Um, and I think, I think, uh, it, it's, it's like a, a, a cool thing to do, right. To, to be able to touch it and feel it and realize that it's, it's not that big of a deal that, you know, getting to 10k per month, like, it, you know, it, you really just want to, you really just have to want it, you know, uh, um, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. Obviously you need a proven system. You need like a proven business model, et cetera, et cetera. And you need to put in the work obviously. Right. But you truly just want to have to want it. Right. And have to believe that you can get there. Um, so I think that that's why it was interesting to me to like, see you, you know, at a young age, right. Saying like, you know, leaving the traditional life that you had behind in the UK, I believe. Right. Paris, Paris. Yeah. Oh, Paris. Yeah. Um, uh, France, uh, and then leaving to, uh, to Bali. Yeah, and, and places like that, like Bali as well, you know, uh, especially in Southeast Asia, like Thailand and stuff, you can literally live like in those places for you know, $10 a day, you know, if you're being like pretty conservative, like, and that's including, you know, food, but I mean, obviously you're not going to have like a, a you know, massive like villa or whatever, but you know, it, it's just, a, it, 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 that's why it's like a really good digital nomad place. Like you can also meet, you know, some, some really cool yeah. people and uh, yeah, it was definitely a great, great experience. Yeah. I definitely feel you on the, the, tropical vibes uh that for me like i love traveling and i love going to tropical places but i just cannot work and travel like i, I can get a bunch of shit done but it's just like why w why would you like i love having a base as you said like in a in a in a vibrant city right where there's like you know the pace is just there right um than go to a tr tropical place to to work like i don't know i, I just never understood it. i've done I, but i think you have to like do it and go through it to realize that you know for some people it, it works tremendously well right so i don't know maybe it's, it's, it's just up. hard it's harder when you know it's just beautiful weather every day you've got the yeah. beach uh, f you know, a few meters away from you uh you know some really nice like beach clubs and stuff like it, it just makes it yeah. like you have more distractions basically you know in, you know, in some ways and um and yeah um i, I i've understood that i prefer uh, well, when it comes to like grinding and like, you know, scaling the agency or whatever, I prefer the, um, you know, like the city life basically, or like a, a more active place. Yeah. Cause I may butcher this, but you're, you're in Toulouse, right? Right now or no? T uh, Toulouse. Where are you at right no, now? No, no, I'm in, I'm in uh, just outside of Paris right now. So oh, Paris, like okay. France I don't for know a bit. why yeah. I thought, I don't know. I don't know why I thought, I thought you were in, in Toulouse or something like that. But, um, um, okay. So, so I mean, and, and how does that like, in terms of, of your current setup, right? Like what, what would you say um, are some of the, the routines and habits that you've put in place that are outside of work that allow you to like be the most productive and allow you to get, you know, be the most, yeah, get, get the most done for, for your business? Yeah, so it's pretty interesting because I, I recently, probably like a few months ago, created or created my own kind of version of like, you know, uh, you, you've probably heard like monk mode, like uh, 75, 75 hard, uh, hard okay, yeah. you know, like yeah. on, Andy Frisella, like, it, like, like these are stuff that I have tried and stuff. And, and I've, I've basically like kind of created my own thing. I call it hell mode basically. And I go mm. through, um, it's, it's typically 60 days. Like that's like kind of the default period, but it's a, those 60 days are like very intense. And it's, it's, and then outside of that, it's basically the same, but not as intense. You know, it's like, obviously I'm still doing the, the, um, the daily, like, uh, you know, the, the, um, agency tasks that, that, you know, move the needle forward and stuff. But for example, just to give you an idea, like what the, my hell mode would include is like 4.50 AM wake up uh, every day, like reading 30 pages, you know, a day, um, having a nice cold shower as soon as I wake mm. up. Um, what else? Yeah. Gym every day, like, or, you know, 45 minute workout every day. Like sometimes I go for a run, like, uh, yeah, basically stuff like that. And, and, and also um, cutting out bad habits as well. So like that, I think that's really important. Like, for example, there's no YouTube, you know, uh, no, um, no, like no watching TVs or, uh, you know, uh, movies or, or TV, except on Sundays. I have a little like kind of right. exception, you know, Sundays I, I'll allow myself that. Uh, and, and yeah, like stuff like, uh, you know, no bad food, you know, no cheat meals, like 
and and obviously following a really good diet like that's basically the main mm. overview of uh of, of what yeah. what i do when i'm really like focused and grinding and then outside of that uh, like I'll, I'll i'll just you know I'll, I'll always work out like like daily is kind of uh, it's kind of like part of what like what i do you know now uh, it's like kind of a habit but mm. um you know, I might not wake up at 4.50, for example, like, you know, uh, outside of that. I, I, but I think it's really important to, like, if, if you don't, like, like, if I don't do that, like, still wake up on a regular basis, you know, like, like, uh, uh, for example, like 7 a.m. every morning, you know, so, so I, I think that's very important. But yeah. You're, you're on what day now out of the 60? So, so I recently just finished it and I went okay. for a trip to, uh, to Holland, like a few days ago. Um, and basically I'm planning to restart it in, uh, yeah, basically a few days, but I, I completed like the, the, you know, 60 days, mm. uh, you know, full cycle of 60 days, basically like just recently. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for a lot of people that might sound like hell, but I, I'm like, shit, that's, you know, that's fucking dope, you know? Uh, cause I think, I think. I mean, some of the, the, the most fulfilled and happiest, uh, moments that I've had and phases of my life have been like in, in that sort of, um, mechanic right and that that sort of like uh mental space where you're just dialed in you're just on your grind and then not only that but when you actually because i do believe you know I, I do believe in balance like I, I do believe like i mean it depends on what people enjoy right but i i am a big proponent of like enjoying your money right not just wasting it on dumb shit but like taking those trips like actually living experiences right um i don't believe in like hoarding your money and just n not doing anything with it because like why save just make more you know um so, I mean, again, a balance, right? But uh, I think it, it, it just feels that much nicer, right? When you take that trip to Holland, when you, when you, when you break out of the, the, um, the 60 days, right? And, and you can yeah, yeah. like truly enjoy because you, you know you've put in the work. I, I think there's, there's no yin without yang, right? Uh, and I don't know, but I, I love living a, a binary life. Like it's yes or no, you know? It's like play hard, you know, work hard, play hard. Exactly. That's, that, that, that's that's really the philosophy like because that, that's uh why i guess it's in cycles because i know that it's pretty unre unrealistic to do that every single day of, of, of yeah. the year you know like 365 days like every day uh because at the end of the day you know as you mentioned we want to enjoy like our hard work and uh i mean don't get me wrong it's though those cycles though are usually like <laughs> the times where i am the most happy like uh, you know mm -hmm. i am like just in you know the the most um fulfilled if you will because like, i'm really like clear on what i'm doing like the vision etc and it's also where when i get the most results you know you know for the yeah. for for the agency um and 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 that yeah that's that's just because it's a uh, it, it kind of gives you the structure to kind of like kill it every day basically you yeah, know yeah. and and yeah you, you've got to have you know after like the first you know week first one to two weeks it kind of gives you this extra amount of discipline that you didn't know you had, you know, and, mm. and it translates to your agency work and all that, which is, yeah, massive. And I suggest anyone, <laughs> you know, watching this, uh, you know, to, to have some type of like program like that, because, because it's, it's, it's a very good move. Yeah. Th I think that the, the program and g even giving it a name, is just a smart idea, right? Because it's kind of like you're subscribed to something and, and I mean, th there's something, there's something about like keeping a streak i don't know we're, we're just such like simple human beings you know like if you break the streak <laughs> you're you're fucked right and then you have to start at, at, at square one so i think i think there's something about you know and that's why i think these programs are so popular right it's like i think this project 50 or something like that like 75 hard you know what you just described for 60 days i think there's something about like keeping a streak uh that keeps you also dialed in and, and keeps you motivated to keep moving forward because you know th there's something about achieving something like and accomplishing you know ticking it off the list um in terms of the lifestyle sort of things, and uh, have you seen any impact when you've started making more money? Yeah, I, I, for sure. I, I think um, from like zero to um, like, let's say 8K a month, like I, I definitely feel like that impacts like your happiness to some, some degree. Like mm -hmm. it actually, you know, definitely uh, improves it. In, you know, obviously like there's the same money doesn't buy happiness, but I agree with that beyond like, when you're, you know, like, like 8K a month plus, like it probably doesn't impact you more, but the, you know, zero to 8K, let's say a month, like that gives you a lot more happiness just from the freedom that it gives you. Like, yeah. you know, the, the ability to uh, say to, you know, I'm going to fly to Thailand tomorrow um, and be able to do that because, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm obviously 
um, you know, I've got an agency and, and, I, and I can do that, right? Um, and, and yeah, just loads of things like the ability to, you know, buy, you know, your friends or your family, like stuff that they want or whatever, like, you know, and, and not being able to stress about it necessarily. And also, yeah, yeah I, I guess it's the security as well that, uh, you know, um, and, and, and the fact that, yeah, you're, you're like actually accomplishing what you said you'd be accomplishing like two years ago, you know, and, and, and yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's a nice uh, feeling basically. It is, dude, it is. I think, I think, yeah, like the fact that number one as you said like it when you you know especially when you get to the eight you know 10k um yeah, yeah. mark it just solves a lot of money problems right um then two like and, and it's funny that you say it because for me it's it's one of the most fulfilling things about money it's it's being able to like have the freedom to travel anywhere right so for example if i want to get the fuck out of here like I'll, I'll 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 get like a plane and boom you know like you're not having to think about money or, or like you know like you can book a really cool hotel or you can you know like a really cool apartment and, and it allows you to like travel and especially in the society that we live in now where freedom is is being limited uh slowly right uh, more and more i think it's never been more important to have that that location time and, and financial freedom financial freedom is not enough anymore you know you have to be able to move around very quickly you have to be able to be in control of your schedule because you you may have to move fast you know um and then, yeah, as you said, like the, the fulfillment of, of having set a bunch of goals and hidden it, like it, it, money is how we keep score, it's, it's the scoreboard, right? It's how we keep score uh, when it comes to business. Um, and I think, I think that's massive. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and as, I, as I mentioned, like still got such a long way to go, obviously, but even at my, you know, um, I guess uh, a stage, which is, you know, like nothing compared to, you know, where your agency, at, you know, is that, for example, but, you know, that already gives you like obviously a lot more happiness and freedom and, and then, you know, um, yeah, you know, the, then I guess it's all about just having like, you know, a bigger kind of purpose and, and you know, mission behind, like continuing to scale. And, and yeah, that's, that's what obviously um, I'm making sure, you know, we have at the agency. So, so yeah. What, what are some of those, those next big goals that excite you? Yeah. So, I mean, pretty, uh, uh, I guess like a common one, but it's to get to hundred K a month uh, and, you know, mm -hmm. in, um, in, in, in revenue uh, for the agency. But not only that, like, well, what that means is, is obviously we're, um, you know, behind actually achieving that goal. It means that we're impacting a lot of businesses positively and, and you know, making a lot of uh, happy clients and also impacting, you know, my team members positively, positively as well. Like, uh, my goal is to obviously uh, also expand, the, you know, certain areas of our, like, agency. I mean, I don't want to just be doing, um, like, Facebook paid ads, like Facebook Instagram ads, basically, right now. Uh, so I've recently hired a, um, an email marketer, for example. Right. And, and, uh, and, and that's just part of like expanding, uh, you know, the agency continuing to grow. Like by the end of the year, I want to have, um, you know, five team members and be at around like 50, 60 K, um, a month, which, you know, I, I'm, I, th I think we can achieve and, and yeah. Um, and, and, and that's really it. Like, uh, just continuing to, to obviously, you know grow and 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 uh and always like remind yourself of the vision you know is is is, is key love it brother any uh any final comments uh any any fi you know final words that, that you want to say to to the audience yeah i mean i'm guessing obviously most of your audience is probably uh you know in the agency space right or you know is thinking or is running the, the agency and so I mean, really like the main, main thing to, to keep in mind, and you know, if, if you're looking to say, just get to 5k a month or 10k a month or hundred K a month, like, like I am, um, you know, just obviously stay consistent, you know, uh, persevere and then stay disciplined. And, and those are really like the, la the, 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 the only three things you really need with, uh, you know, a obviously clear vision, uh, you know, as well. Like, so having a mentor helps a lot, uh, and, and, and once you have that, like, there's basically no way to, to, to lose, you know, if you, if, if, if you don't quit, no way to lose. And, and then, uh, you know, uh, you'll be in, uh, in, uh, you know, well, my shoes or, you know, uh, high made shoes in, in no time. Awesome, man. Then, uh, I think, I think that's a, that's a wrap, dude. Very juicy, uh, conversation. Um, I want to, I want to acknowledge you, uh, Thomas for, uh, your constant improvement, man. And, and, you know, the way you've leveled up, uh, in, in a short time frame you know like i feel like for us entrepreneurs you know years it, we see that as, as so much fucking time because if you're doing a lot a year you can change your life in a year right but in the grand scheme of things like damn you, you you're 
you're so fucking young still, uh, and and you've got such an um, insane journey uh, ahead of you. So, I want to acknowledge you for that, man. And uh, you've brought the, the the nuggets, the heat uh, on this uh, on this interview. And uh, you know, hopefully, we'll we'll do this again, man. When you when you hit the the hundred k per month. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I'm, I'm I'm glad I could have provided you know those nuggets and and some value uh, today. And uh, just yeah, it was, it was great chatting. All right, awesome, man. We'll uh, we'll speak soon. I uh, appreciate uh, appreciate you for your for your time. Bye bye. Bye. Well, there you have it, my chat with Thomas Gale. I think it was a pretty juicy one. If you thought so, uh, I would really appreciate it if you dropped the thumbs up for the, the YouTube algorithm. If you're interested in the mentorship, there will be a link in the description. You can go ahead and apply. It's not an online course, it's a mentorship. So I like to keep it a very tight knit and give that one-to-one -one personalized attention because I've seen that a proven process plus that tailored attention is what leads to those big results. So you can go ahead and apply. And if you're a good fit, we can talk about it. And... If you haven't joined the free Facebook mastermind that I've got, where I'm doing live trainings that I'm not doing anywhere else, there'll also be a link in the description to go ahead and apply for that. So with that being said, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.